Welcome to the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise podcast with global sales trainer and professional speaker, Lois Kofi. Each week, it is her goal to share inspiration and education for you to be, do, have the best health and wealth and wisdom for your life. All right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. This is Lois Kofi with the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise weekly podcast. And I'm so excited. We actually have not one, not two, but three guests this week because this is the time of year where we're winding down 2020. We're getting ready for 2021. And I just have a lot of amazing people that I want to share with you. So without further ado, I just want to dive right in. If you're if you're tuning in live, go ahead and comment below, hashtag live, where you're tuning in from. If you're listening to this later, hashtag replay. And if you're not already a part of what I call the cool tribe, the cool club here at Healthy and Wealthy and Wise Facebook community, please join. Just go to Facebook, Healthy and Wealthy and Wise, or if you go to healthyandwealthyandwise.com, you can actually subscribe to receive the recording of this um, coming up next week. And of course, you will be able to hear this in iTunes here in the next few days. So if you've never ever tuned in, um, my name again is Lois Kofi. I'm a sales trainer turned podcaster thanks to 2020. I think a lot of us pivoted and started new things. And I wanted to be able to bring hope and inspiration to my guests this year. That's really the number one reason I started this podcast. And my audience is salespeople and entrepreneurs just like me who are trying to figure it out, right? We want to live our best life. We want the best health. We want the best wealth. And we want the best wisdom. So each week, I bring guests who are experts in one of those categories, health, wealth, and wisdom. And today, I'm super excited because I really think this information is so relevant to here and now. And some of you maybe have never heard of the concepts, the wisdom that I'm going to have my guest share with you today. So if you see value in this message, please hit the share button and send it out to your Facebook tribe, your Facebook community, send it in private message, whatever the case may be. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our amazing guest. I actually met Anita indirectly through Amy Tyson, who is my mentor, who first introduced me to this amazing wisdom called Bazi and Chinese astrology and feng shui. And at first when I heard about it, I'm like, what, what the heck is that? Right? So my hope is that this information today, if it's your first time ever hearing it, that it may be a solution to your 2021, to something new, something to give you hope, something that is actually uh, has no conflict with your religion or anything like that. It's an environmental science, uh, a philosophy, I might say, that's the way I look at it, that actually heightened my awareness, my consciousness, and actually heightened my spirituality. And consulting with Anita Rosenberg and Amy Tyson, who are both cut from the same cloth of teaching of this stuff, I actually had what I believe was one of my best years in 2020. If it wasn't for this environmental science and this wisdom that we're going to talk about today, I don't know, 2020 might have not had been so cool or so good. So I'm going to introduce you to Anita, who's in Hollywood. I got to actually go to her condo last Christmas. You remember that? I came to your house. Yeah, I got to meet came you. to the candle party. Yeah. Yes, I came, I came to the candle party. We'll, we'll talk about these magical candles. And she's, like I said, an expert in Hollywood for Chinese astrology and feng shui. And she's worked with some famous people like Ashley Tisdale, Miranda Kerr, and all of the greats, because she's like the expert in Hollywood on this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and turn over to you. I'd love for you, Anita, to share a little bit about your story and how the heck did you grow up or were you born wanting to, to do this stuff? Hey, Lois, how are you? So yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um, my journey is quite uh, interesting and unique and eclectic. I uh, grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was always an artist and photographer. I went to art school. I went to film school. I have a master's degree from NYU Graduate Film School. I went to school. Spike Lee was in my class. And I moved to Hollywood to direct movies. So I was one of the few female directors in Hollywood in the late 80s. I did Modern Girls and Assault of the Killer Bimbos. 
I thought I would have in a really exciting uh, career in film business. I hung in there for 14 years. Uh, I'd like to, I always like to say that uh, even a four hour lunch with George Clooney could not convince me to stay in the business. There just wasn't a lot of work. It's interesting. I've been watching a lot of TV. We've all been at home right now. There's so many women who are directing episodic TV right now. So I'm pretty excited and impressed. But in the late 80s, there was just a really small handful of us. Um, so I was in the movie business for a while. And one of my big uh, reinventions was I uh, started hand painting decorative furniture and accessories out of my basement. And I grew a million dollar business in five years. So I left the movie business um, to, to go into a creative field that was actually doing really well for me. And it was exciting to, uh, I, I was able to grow this business because I understood the movie business. Had I just been an artist, because we have a lot of, hopefully there's some people watching that are in the arts or creative, and it's always uh, really challenging. How do I monetize my creative uh, spirit, my artistic adventures? So I was able to actually monetize it. What, one of the things that happened, I started importing from China. I could no longer, it was the middle 90s, and I had to get my prices down, and it was all about bringing in containers. So I was on a trip to China to see the factory that was manufacturing my line, and I was on a tour in Hong Kong of the peak, and it was feng shui this and feng shui that, and I'm like, I want to know what feng shui is. I want to feng shui my booth at the trade show to get more clients and customers and, and things. So I never thought I would have a career in metaphysics. Now, I will say... I am an intuitive uh, by nature. I've always been intuitive. I've always been into metaphysics and spirituality, but I never thought it could be a career. And all of a sudden, I just started studying feng shui, and one thing led to another. And this is actually my full-time business. This is what I have been doing now for the last 20 years. And Batsu's Chinese astrology. Oh, shout out for Hong Kong. Yes, we love Hong Kong. Um, uh, so... Ch Batsi's Chinese astrology and everything in your life is in your chart. And that's what is so fascinating. So originally, just to give you a little background, I was doing feng shui. Uh, I did Western feng shui. And I will tell you, if I had to tell one more person how to clear their clutter, I was going to just like scream. Because, <laughs> yes, we want to clear our clutter. It's not about moving your couch, although sometimes maybe that does help. But it, it's an environmental science. What's really important is where's the chi in the environment? Are you tapping into it? Does your physical space support you? Does it not support you? Then at one point, I just thought, I want to know about these animal signs. What are these? What's, you know, the, you know, people go, oh, you know, we go to Chinese restaurants. What do you see on the menu? I'm born, you're the horse, or you're the rooster. What's it mean, right? So all of a sudden, I'm back in Hong Kong, and I got to meet a uh, feng shui master, and she said, you know, I think you should really study with a guy named Joey Yap. He may come to the U.S., and you could learn about, you know, astrology. It's, it's, a, lot, uh, it's a lot more detailed than just the generic stuff at the Chinese restaurants. I was like, oh, interesting. I happened to come back to L.A., and he was doing a yearly talk, and that was almost 20 years ago. And it's fascinating. It's really exciting. So Amy and I actually, we work together a lot. We're associates. We're doing some big corporate projects, right up in commercial projects. And we are both also talking about what are all the things to get us ready for the Chinese New Year? So I thought maybe today, one of the things I wanted to do is talk about like what was happening this last year? What, what happened? And what can we expect to have happen going forward? Does that sound interesting? That sounds amazing. Take it away. Please, please right. share. Okay, so 2020. So here's what did we all really think this time last year this would happen? Absolutely not. So we look back, hindsight's always interesting. And when my teacher Joey Yap was talking, he's in Malaysia and he was talking about last year. And here's what I find fascinating. We have, okay, when there is a solar eclipse, they're apparently um, thought of, now this is a solar eclipse in Western, uh, Indian, Vedic astrology, Chinese astrology, there is a void. It creates a void in an area. They're not good luck. If you look at a solar eclipse, apparently it brings you bad luck. So in December 26th of 2019, who looked at the uh, solar eclipse? Our president, Donald Trump, decided to go out and look at the solar eclipse. 
Um, apart from that, we also looked in hindsight, where was it appearing in what's called a Batsa chart, uh, a Chi Men chart? It's a different, different astrological chart. Um, the two things that got hit, which I have on my little cheat notes, but the life door and life is representing financing. So there became a void in finance. It hit heavenly heart. So all of a sudden it hit doctors, hospitals, illnesses. So we knew that there was going to be a, um, we knew that, there, that we're, we were going to have a financial crisis in 2020, just from the nature of the charts and the forecast. We didn't know what would trigger it. What would trigger it, it was what? Doctors, hospitals, illness, illness, the coronavirus. So that's kind of, now we know what triggered it. What I really want to let people know coming up is, I know we're really all concerned right now about our health, um, which we should be. But the biggest picture is finances. That's going to be a longer road of recovery, a longer issue. And that's really where that's that's the bigger picture moving forward. Now, interesting, we have a solar eclipse coming up again. We have one coming up on the 14th. Um, I sent my newsletter out a couple of days ago. I, I don't know. I put down the 26th and I was like thinking to myself, oh, that's the same as last year. Well, it was last year's. So people called me on it, but it's the 14th. So what I want to tell everyone is what's what's being told is don't go out and look at the solar eclipse. Just it doesn't mean don't go out of the house, but let's try to avoid it. You don't want bad luck. Nobody wants bad luck. But here's what this one's going to hit this year. This one's going to hit what's called the pillar. Uh, the pillar is pillar uh, star and that's communication. So that means it's going to trigger a lot of miscommunication. Well, we're in the middle of miscommunication anyway, aren't we? It's going to get worse. Also, death door. Okay, so this is where I don't want to be doomy and gloomy, but more deaths. Now, we also know it's, you know, it's the holidays. We knew that it's flu season, but just be prepared. It's, it's hitting the death door. That's just, that's just where we're at and what's going to happen. So it's interesting because the, the thought is we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same storm, right? But we're all in different boats. So like you said last year, so we all had a storm in 2020, but you know, you were in a different boat, Lois. You were in the success boat. I had a great year. If you're in the wellness, health, and healing fields, these are great fields for the 2020 and 2021. And there is no one size fits all business plan. And that's what I find so fascinating about looking at someone's personal chart. My business plan is not your business plan, but there are a couple of things we can talk about. So I wanted to ask you this question because it's interesting. In 2020, one of the big things is if you could figure out how to work from home and you could say logistically, yes, we all had to figure out how to work from home, but it was actually in the forecast of the year. If you could go digital and if you mm -hmm. could work from home, you had a business. You were able to survive and have a business. I mean, I, I remember my first Zoom call, I had to practice with my neighbor. I was like, I don't know what Zoom is. Let's practice. I want to like... I'm, I suppose I, like I'm talking to you, but I was like, I got to look at the camera because that's right there instead of looking at the screen. I mean, there's you got to have good lighting. There's so much to learn. So you tra you transitioned your business to be able to really work from home uh, online digitally. And that uh, don't you think that was a game chaser for, changer for you? Intensely. Like, thankfully, I was already looking at podcasting, hadn't launched it yet. Pandemic hit. Thankfully, I had already been I hired two coaches. Um, to kind of help me navigate my coaching business. And I, I wanted to have a major, you know, a big business. So I knew I didn't want to just do face-to-face, belly-to-belly. I was already doing Zoom webinars. I was already building my YouTube channel. So the stars were aligned for me and I was able to just, boom, be really quick and pivot and keep that momentum going. In fact, last week's guest for you guys that might have missed it was... Uh, we talked about a work from home mastery course that this guy created this year to help people. Because like you said, if you weren't already doing Zoom, you didn't already have the things figured out. It's a lot to learn in, in a short period of time. But I was fortunate. Well, coming into 2021, we're going to have different problems and you need different solutions. It's not going to be the same old problems and you cannot solve them the same old way that you solve problems. So as people are saying, well, you know, it's going to be changes and challenges and I don't like change. Well, the new normal is the new you. You're already the new you. So, of course, the new normal is going to be perfect because we are going to be the new you. Now, here's really interesting. Like, I don't I, I know Western astrology. I, I It doesn't align with me as much as, as Chinese does. But we're heading into, if not already, in the, in the Aquarian age. 
And the equivalent really in, in Chinese astrology, Chinese feng shui is we have been in what's called period eight. We're heading into period nine. Period nine is, they're all 20 year cycles. Period nine starts in 2024, but we're already seeing the movement that's happening. So in 20, uh, in period eight, it was the period of the young man. If we will look back at 2020, there were a lot of young men that came up. We had Barack Obama was a young man who rose to power. So it's kind of the year of the young men. Now, 2024 is the year of the, is the period of the women women in control. And if you think about it, I mean, Kamala Harris in 2024, I would not be surprised if she runs for president and if she becomes the president. Um, and, and, I, and I'm not making a prediction. I'm just saying because it's year of a woman and she would be a, a female power and she would be empowerment and it would be right in alignment with the time period. So the point is, you know, you want to see what's coming and you want to navigate it. Is really important. Now, the three pieces of advice we gave everyone last year, which we want to continue is number one, collect debts. If anybody owes you money this year, if you don't get it by January 1st, you're not going to get it. So I would get that money now or make a game plan to get it paid off. Last year, our big advice this time of year for 2020 was you should put aside three to six months of cash. We didn't know why we said that, but we said it. And uh, gee, for people who actually did it, it, it was important. This year, it's more like six to nine months of cash. You can you need more cash stocked away. So anyone who's living paycheck to paycheck, you're going to have a problem because what's going to start to happen in 2021, um, and this is what, when Joey was talking about the new year, we're going to lose the middle class. This is what his prediction is. I'm only, I'm only relaying this info, and I'll just sort of say it. We'll see what happens. It, it's going to shift. The have and have nots, so there's going to be a much bigger gap. So we're going to have much more people up here, much more people down here. He also said and made a comment that he thought uh, the Asian markets and European markets are going to be much bigger in U.S. U.S., which has been the biggest financial market, is no longer going to be the biggest player. And that's really interesting. We'll follow that. We'll see see how that kind of trends out. Um, one of the things that I did want to talk about, I have... I have a little cheat note from my, you know, one of the things that I, I will tell everyone, I, um, if you go to my website and sign up for my newsletter, I'm going to be starting to post little, little blurps and blips about things coming up. Um, I am mostly known for doing one-on-one -on -one consults. I uh, will be doing a Chinese New Year talk. I will probably be doing it in February, be a little bit late, but um, so please sign up for my newsletter. I don't have the date yet, but uh, date to be determined. But there's a few things I just thought would be fun. I wanted to kind of share with everyone um, from notes I'll be talking about. So there's three kinds of adversities uh, I, I, that can be reduced, averted, or converted with metaphysics this year. So I thought let's just hit on a few things, three things, top three things that maybe everyone can think about that they can maybe work on right now. So scarcity. You know, people are going to be doing scarcity thinking. There's not enough. I'm going to be sick. I've lost my job. Okay, so yes, there are some realities, some scarcity thinking. But if you stay in scarcity thinking, you're only going to see the dead ends. Um, instead, we want you to raise your vibration and see where you can serve others. Serving others is huge. However you can. It doesn't have to be financial. It can be of your time. It can be giving back. Um, I have a client who is an amazing um dentist who does um, sort of uh, reconfigures faces. And she's doing a couple pro bono projects coming up. Um, anything that you can do to give back kind of helps to fill you up. Does that make sense on that note? And here's the deal. If you're living in a downward spiral of scarcity and you're down here, I'm sorry, I can't get you up here. I just can't. I can maybe get you to neutral. That's about where we can possibly, that's what we're aiming for. So you got to get yourself to neutral. You got to get yourself, and once you're in a nice neutral place, you can go down or you can go up, but at least you can start to make little steps. But don't, you know, I want people to be like realistically optimistic. People are like, oh, I want to make millions this year. I want to do this. Let's be with what is within your realm of possibilities. Mm -hmm. And I want everyone to think about also, like, here we go. Like, let's talk about obscurity. Some people during this time is going to say, you know, I want to be irrelevant. I want to hide. I'm an introvert. I don't really want to get out. You know, there's not every day we feel like being, I mean, you you have a big presence on social media and you're always out there 
and, and putting yourself out there. And there's days I'm sure when you're thinking, I don't really feel like putting myself out there. But if you don't get out there, make yourself known or find a passion and a purpose that's going to make a difference in your life and a difference in others, you're just going to, you're going to go into obscurity this year. And that's not where you want to be. So find your comfort place, whatever is comfortable to you. Does that make sense? Like Amy, who we both know loves to speak. So if you want to follow a lot of Amy's workshops all year, it's Amy Tyson and she is amazing. Oh my goodness. My battery is running low. Okay. Uh -oh. I may, Ooh, I <laughs> charged it. I know I'm not the best on laptops. Okay. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to have to plug it in. I'm going to do one last thing, then you have to talk for a second. Also, I discontent. If you think that things aren't fair, poor me, do not throw a pity party. Because if you're negative about everything, you're not going to be successful. You need to be, but like I said before, you, have, you must change this or you're not going to be able to excel. So we're not going to throw this pity party. All right. Quickly, technical technical difficulties. You I speak. Let me go plug, plug yeah. myself. It's, it's perfect timing, guys, because actually what I wanted to, this is what I love about podcasting. This is real time. <laughs> so one of the things that, and I know some of this is maybe a little bit over your head, okay? So if you have questions, please comment below if you're on the live show. And even if you're on the, the replay, uh, feel free to, to still ask below. Anita is inside of my Healthy and Wealthy and Wise Facebook community, so she can answer. If you go to her website, anitarosenberg.com, you can sign up for her email newsletter and she can teach you and help you all of the things. And obviously you can reach out to me and ask questions too. But one of the things that Anita really helped me with over the last couple of years is she actually sells these, these magical candles, okay? And I know it, maybe it sounds weird to you. I don't know. I, I'm not like a, a magic, you know, voodoo person in, in necessarily. But but what I do believe in is this environmental science and this methodology that Anita and Amy Tyson, who's been on my podcast before, teaches. So we really we made a huge risk last year. We moved to California. My husband didn't have a job. We were starting all over from scratch increase in monthly expenses, right? So we're talking major increase coming from the Midwest, right? And immediately I consulted with Amy. She helped us with the transition based on my birth date, my husband's birth date, and this environmental science called Bazi Chi Men charts. They're all based on the Chinese astrology that she was talking about. Through that process, we also, uh, to kind of overcome scarcity, stinking thinking she taught us with these magical candles that there's a wealth candle this is called um a ganesh candle um it's basically something that is focused on on moving uh removing obstacles focusing on prosperity again affirmations prayers meditation whatever you want to call it um it actually helps us to focus that energy in a positive way so i'm not even kidding we bought um, some candles from her. One was called a money candle. Um, and through that process, we would light that candle every day. We would have our little affirmations, our prayers, our own ritual. And sure enough, my husband got his highest paying job ever. Then we kept doing it because we're like, oh my gosh, this is positive stuff, right? We, we come from a scarcity mindset. Both of us kind of grew up with that mindset and it can be easy very, very easy, especially during these difficult times to go into scarcity mode. And what Anita and Amy teach through this amazing philosophy is how to change your thinking, how to focus. I was just talking, okay. I was just talking about the candles. <laughs> oh my was, God. You know, I, I never telling... use a laptop. I'm so sorry. And I charged it. Okay. Anyway, I'm back. Okay. It was perfect. So just so you know, I was, I was reinforcing what you said, you know, talking about the scarcity thinking, focusing on your comfort zone, your passion. And I, I said, when we moved from Minnesota to California, we bought your candles to help us with the move and help us with manifesting. And, and my husband got his highest paying job. And I say this, I say this with humility because of the support that you and Amy both give us, we totally had our best financial year ever this year combined, right? 
And, and I, I say that with, with total respect to people who have lost their jobs, who've lost their minds. I mean, we had some close calls this year ourselves, but we just kept focusing on the positive. We kept burning our candles. Ganesh removed the obstacles, right? You got and a lot so, of big money too, didn't you? You were like the big yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I just, I don't know if you want to say anything, if this is a good time to talk about the candles, you know, the crystals, the, the, the incense, you know, I've, I've, she's helped me construct my own, um, I call it my inspirational shrine of manifestation inside of my house. So I'll let you take over. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, look, when I work with clients, you know, a lot of times I wish I could say, okay, I'm going to throw fairy dust at you. I've left and now life is great. Especially when I do feng shui, I'll do space cleansing. Or if I work as a cosmic coach and I kind of go through your chart and I talk about what are the energies going on, like you can hit your head against the wall, but if you look to see what energies are available and where are the opportunities and that's where you put your focus and energies, you'll be more successful. So, but I've, I've worked with magic candles for 40 years. And so at a certain point in time in this business, I thought, you know what, why not Instead of just saying, go find your own magic candle and your own crystal, um, I thought, well, I'll carry them and I'll have that as an offering. So I have a, a, a spiritual practitioner who is a high magic person. It is not me. Candle making is a very complex art. It is, it's got secret recipes. It's made at moon phases. It's like, there's a whole magic involved in it. And so I, I have a line of them on my website and I love to hear great stories. Um, some work better for other people than others. I created um, a new one this week, though. Here, this is my new one um, for sort of the new year is called um, Courage. So I really just felt like courage is, is it's a little different than confidence because I do have a confidence candle. But courage is about having stamina and strength and positive thinking and being able to take those next steps and leap because I think that that is something we can all benefit from just being more courageous moving forward this year. So that's a new candle. I have those and I'm into crystals. So I know you've got your, you have the angel light. That's good for um, good sleep. It is good for insomnia. A lot of people aren't sleeping that well. I, I do also, anytime you have a blue crystal, it's good for your throat chakra. So this, this past uh, trade show, when I went to, I go to usually Denver and Tucson and I was at the Denver one, I bought lots of blue, like every blue onyx, trollite, blue calcite, blue quartz. I mean, everything was in the blue family. I think we're all about communicating because look, this year, this year, 2020 and next year, it's not just about who you know, it's who you know well. So you need to build those com connections. You need to build those, those communication and, and Pushing your boundaries. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you, Sean. Um, Can you please speak to what he just commented? I appreciate you, Sean, uh, reaching out and saying something because I think. You, yeah, what is this? So he says, one of the things I struggle with here of conflicting beliefs is do what you're comfortable with and taking risk and pushing your boundaries. Well, yeah. how, do you, how do you balance the two? Because for some people, it's it's scary to go out your comfort zone. But I even tell my clients, do one thing every day, like that scares you, right? The Eleanor Roosevelt quote. But some people are just so already scared because life has been just happening, you know, this year. But they know they need to to balance the two. What do you have any advice on that? Gosh, that's such a big topic. It's so interesting. <laughs> um, you know. I guess I don't really, I'm not a push your boundary person. That's not a term that I use really. I think people put, have to put more boundaries up. I think people don't have boundaries and they're just pinging around all over the place. Um, you know, I guess. Well, and one thing he could do is reach out to you because here's the other answer, Sean, is it depends. <laughs> it depends. It depends on your chart and, and your, your, yeah. your, your, your you're like, I'm the year of the snake. I was born in 77, not to date myself, but we all have our own, well, if you want to call it karma or, or whatever, um, it, it's all based on, on what you teach. So I think it's, it's probably, it's a per person answer, right? Like you said that before. It kind of is. So, he, I mean, here, here's the, uh, yeah, the answer is, you know, when I look at your chart, I'm going to be able to say, look, here are the energy patterns coming to you. I actually do something really interesting for anybody who doesn't have a ton of money, but wants to like 
uh, who's a self motivator who works on their own. I do something called a monthly Chi Men forecast. I just sent them out for December. It's only $85. It's a do it yourself, but it's based on your personal chart. So I have your birthday and your time. I do what's called a Chi Men chart. It has a little box. It'll tell me what is your guardian of destiny? What are your energies to meditate on? It'll tell me what is the background of your month. What are the actions you should take? Who are the people coming into your world? I've added these new constellations. It's pretty much an overall guide. And so look, in career and business, you can't focus on everything every month. It's just, it's overwhelming. So you might have one month, which is let's focus on raging fans and building our, our connections and contacting more people and reach out. Some months might be scheduled. You have to work out a better schedule. Um, just kind of giving some broad examples. Um, I was just working with a client of mine who, um, you know, she needs a new project, but uh, business, her whole thing was career and business. She really, I know she wanted to buy a new house, but I'm like, I don't know. I'm seeing business and career and monetizing that. And I think, and you need to go to your marketing and come up with something new and fun. So being able to give everybody just a monthly focus that is in alignment with their energies, I think is a really good, it's so that it's not risk taking and, and it's not like stepping out of a comfort zone. It's about saying, okay, this is what I can focus on this month. And it gives you direction. Does that make sense? And then David said, yeah, you, yeah, and David said, you bring uh, reality uh, to your reality. Yeah, where you where you think energy flows, where intention goes. Your intention goes, energy flows. Yeah. So if yeah. you spend that month working on a specific um, issue, you know, I'll tell you an example that came to me. Many uh, last year, I got something in my chi man chart that said I needed to come up with sort of a revenue stream that was a kind of a turnkey revenue stream. Like I didn't have anything in the month that people could sign up for um, that people could put, could get. And then I, I talked to Amy and Amy said, you know, I've been doing these monthly Chi Men forecasts. This is what I'm looking at. And I went, oh, I, my clients are different than Amy's. I'm a little more of the Hollywood set and more entrepreneurs and create creative people and wellness platforms and healers. Um, and I went, oh, that actually is what my month said I should do. So I created it and it's been really kind of awesome. It's It's been a really lovely um, monthly thing that I wouldn't have thought to create had it not come up for me. Does that make sense? Yes. And I, I use it, Sean. I know you're still listening. I use the, I get the monthly chart and like this month and last month, it told me to take a chill pill. And like, oh, really? Lois, Lois what did you have the rest store? Did you have the rest door or something? I can't remember. It was, it was, it was like spiritual. It was more of a time to focus on going inward and my spirituality instead of go, 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 push, 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 push. And I got to tell you, Anita, I've, I've still had things manifest. I've still had increase. I've still, without having to be chasing, you know, and go, 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 which is my normal overachiever. That is hard for you because you, you are very go, go, go. And so when you get that universal energies, then it's kind of like, oh, I could, I could honor that and give my, because then you feel like, oh, I'm being so, I feel my you, I feel guilty. Oh, I'm not pushing myself. You know, and it's not always about pushing. I will tell you one of the things that's kind of always been interesting to me is, so I have something called a, a big money candle. You've lit it a lot. I don't light yep. it that often. But if I don't, because I don't, you know, on a monthly basis, I don't know how many people I'm going to have be working with. Although this is my busy time of the year. So now I've got everyone set up for the new year. But if I look like I don't have a lot of clients lined up, I'll just light the big money and it's money, money come to me as I will. So mode it be. It's a spell candle. And I swear to God, all of a sudden there's a Wi-Fi that goes out in the universe and out of the blue, I start getting clients and calls. Um, not too many because I've already put into the universe that I don't want to burn out. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit older these days. I'm not in the younger aggressive thirties and forties that I used to be. And I have a lifestyle business and I need a lifestyle to my lifestyle business. If that makes sense. But I also just love, I just want to end something really nice. So it's success because what is success to you? What is success to you? What is success to me? And, you know, I know you always kind of wrap it up. What does healthy, wealthy, and wise mean to you? And I had a thought about it. I mean, I feel to me, it's about being authentic. It's about being happy every day. It's about feeling good about the work that I'm doing. 
Um, do I, do we feel like that every single day? No, I mean, we're human. Let's be realistic that, that we're, we're not always um, the perfect of perfect peoples, but um, I just, you know, be realistically optimistic about your finances. You know, what is it within your realm of possibility? And be ambitious. Um, every year I have something where I'll put out what would I like to earn the next year? And it's a little bit, it's, it's a little reach, but it's not a double, you know, it's not like a crazy amount. It's, it's a very reachable. Um, and I don't worry about it all year. I just, but I know I have to take action. You can't just put out out into the universe and go, okay, it's just going to magically come. You have to do the work and you have to strategize, you know, within it. But I think that success is a feeling, isn't it? So what does, what is success? I, I do have a success candle. And one of the things about the candle is just lighting it to go. I mean, I have some people that I work with who you would think are the most super successful people uh, on the planet. And sometimes they don't feel that successful because it's just a personal feeling of what do you, is, is it, a, and I think clarifying, is it a financial amount that makes you successful? Um, or is it, uh, is it an amount of clients that you have? Is it how busy you are? I mean, I don't know. I think it's a personal, personal choice and decisions. It's an evolution for sure. Like healthy and wealthy and wise 10 years ago meant something and success meant something. And today I, I, that's how I look at success. I actually taught a college course called transformational success because as you, as life ebbs and flows and as you learn, that's where the wisdom comes in for me and healthy and wealthy and wise, we're always evolving and always, I think it's great to check in with yourself and say, yeah, what do I want today? What do I want tomorrow? And a year from now, it could be, could be very different. And that's why I'm so excited to have you here because you're a resource that helped me and my husband and my family to be able to have an amazing 2020. And so I invite you guys as we wrap up the call here and um, thank you for answering the the final question already. And if, if you want to add any more about what healthy and wealthy and wise means to you, Anita, you're so welcome to do that before we close it out. But um, please share this message, um, everyone. Because this is the the stuff that, you know, if it wasn't for Anita and Amy and their teaching, I don't know where I would have been in 2020. So 2021 could look amazingly different. If you reach out to Anita, again, go to her website, sign up for her, her newsletter, um, take her up on her, her monthly, um, her monthly chart. Uh, yeah, right, I know. It's over. It's I'm, down right there. I need a yeah, resume. Yeah, please, yeah, please. You know what? Reach out to me. Email me. Let me know what's going on. I've got I, I've got a variety of things that uh, you can you can start with me and plug in. But um, I love the personal work, so I don't have the big generic things. But the candles and crystals are, are a good place to start too. And I just I love working with people that are um, just who want to be more self aware this year. Who are uh, who will work on themselves. If, if you're a self-motivated person, I can give you some fabulous tools, send you off on your journey, and then you can check in with me and we can see where out. It's always nice. I mean, you're a coach. It's really nice to have people that coach you um, on all your various projects. This is this is a good year to either teach other people or or take classes. We should always be doing both, I think. I love it. I love yeah, it. That's, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's wisdom the wisdom of these guys. And, and since you mentioned that, Anita, I just want to close out with a reminder, guys, if you don't already have 2021 written out on paper, like if you're still, you've just been running, running, running and, and maybe stressed out, um, please join me for my 90 minute 2021 planning class. It's, it's all about action. I'm going to help you create your plan on paper, your sales and marketing plan so it can be done. You can enjoy the holidays and just hit the ground running in in the next year so talking about wisdom talking about learning um and and who knows maybe 2020 when you want to work with someone like anita or even someone like myself to guide you take you by the hand and help you grow through the year instead of just going through the year so thank yep. you again Anita, for being here today, guys, please reach out to her and um, share this with other like-minded people who are looking to have a better year in 2021. And tune in tomorrow 
tomorrow at three Eastern, twelve Pacific, I have another guest, Edita, Edita, sorry, Edita Satchel. Say that three times fast. Um, she's a beautiful friend of mine who's the, uh, the owner of Satchel Global, and she is in the travel industry, and she specializes in travel wellness. She's going to teach us how to travel well through the holidays and not get sick and, and just really um, some tips and tricks. If, if you are choosing to travel again throughout the holidays, and even if it's just down the street, how can you take care of yourself? How can you prevent illness and still have fun and still get around this world? And then of course, Friday, I have my usual Friday episode. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Healthy and Wealthy and Wise. Here's to your best health, your best wealth, and your best wisdom. Bye-bye for now. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, refer a friend, and please drop me a rating or a review. If you do that, I'll reward you with a free 20-minute free coaching session on crafting your journey to your best self. Reach out to me at lois at loiskofi.com to claim your 20-minute slot. Until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.